I just made a huge mistake and I'm making this video to save you hours of time. First of all, if you're like me and you're a Mint user, you probably logged into Mint. You were greeted with this cute little window right here that said, let's move over to Credit Karma. Now, first of all, it's not a good substitute. The purpose of Credit Karma is credit cards, your credit score. I don't care about my credit score. I'm here to budget. That's why I signed up for Mint years upon years ago. And so full disclosure, do not click. I repeat, do not click this button right here that says move to Credit Karma because I did that on my other Mint account and I was completely locked out, completely. All of my categories, everything except for my transactions, which I can get from my bank anyway, but everything was gone. I actually contacted Mint Support and I said, where are all my, my personal categories and, and budgets that I've created over the last five to 10 years? And they said, oh, you're locked out. We're sorry, enjoy Credit Karma. And again, Credit Karma, horrible, horrible excuse for a budgeting software. It just is horrible. So what I did, first of all, is I'm just using this other old account that's just obsolete, but I wanted to show you this window. Do not click move to Credit Karma if you want to preserve your information on Mint. So first of all, I would recommend going with the next best alternative, which is Monarch. Uh, and I'm actually gonna show you how to sign up. I'll even have a promo code. I'm not trying to oversell you on it. Yes, it does cost between 50 and 100 bucks a year, but it's not going anywhere unlike Mint. Thank you, Mint, and the 4 million other users like myself who are now having to switch all of our budgeting and all our categories over. So first of all, before you do anything to your Mint account, you'll see this window close out of this right here, and then go over to your budgets on the far left. Click on that and either screenshot this or print it out. This isn't a real budget of mine. Again, this is an old account but save all of this information because otherwise this will all get locked out and you will not be able to access any of this. So you want to preserve this data in Mint so that when you go over to Monarch, you, when you sign up for Monarch, you'll see this right here, customize categories. And this is key. This is something that other places like NerdWallet, for example, they don't allow you to customize your categories. They just have these, this generic health category. So in Monarch, as you can see right here, if you were to click on customize categories, and we're just gonna skip that because you don't care about that. And so they have kind of a pre-populated right here. Look, they've even got little emoji, uh, which is what I did in Wave Books, if, you, if you're familiar with Wave apps. It's a fantastic software, I use that for my business. But in this one in particular, Monarch is fantastic for personal. So if you wanted to, let's say for example, change charity to, I don't know, uh, tithing, you, you could totally do that and then just click save. And oh, I misspelled tithing, but, but you get the point. You can actually customize these categories, which is very, very key. The other thing that I was looking for in a budgeting software was the ability to automatically import transactions from my bank. I don't wanna go back to my old spreadsheet days where I had to compare it with my statement and then like put every single transaction in manually. This will automatically import and do its best to actually match up those. Uh, it takes some learning, but it is nice to actually connect. I can connect straight from my credit union and see all of my transactions automatically imported. So those were the two key items that I was looking for in a budgeting software. Now back to my actual screens on this side, you can see that I have Monarch, and then on this side over here, you see that I have Mint. And this is why you don't want to click that button that says, sure, let's transition over to a pointless piece of software called Credit Karma, because now I can just go from right to left, and I can go through and say, oh, shopping, clothing, and I can go in here, and I can create a clothing category, just like that. If you transition from Mint, this will all be locked out, and this is a screen that you're gonna get right here, you see that I'm completely locked out of Mint. I tried to log into my personal account and it says, hey, let's go to Credit Karma. So you're absolutely locked out into it. Shame on you. As a matter of fact, if we go over to the BBB, let's see what score they have. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh, you can't, you can almost get lower than 1.08. Now to prove to you 
how low that rating is, 1.08. We are going to look up, just for giggles, Mary Kay, which is considered one of the pro most prolific pyramid schemes in the United States. Look at that. We're going to do the headquarters, okay? And their rating on BBB is 1.08. One, three. So they actually have a better rating. A pyramid scheme company has a better rating than Intuit. Shame on Intuit. <laughs> this is kind of, that's funny. Okay, back to Monarch, okay? Because that's probably why you're here. Let's check this out. Now, let's just click around and first of all, just show you the dashboard. I just signed up right here. If you want a free trial, uh, I actually have my referral code in the description below. Click on that. Uh, this is what exactly what you're gonna see right when you sign up. So let's just take a test drive of this just to show you what you're getting if in fact you do sign up. So this is the dashboard right here. You can see that I was going down, checking off, uh, creating categories, create goals. I don't really use much of that, but I do want to create a budget. Now, obviously, this is going to be tweaked because I've just, just for giggles, just put in some random categories right here. Uh, but you will be putting in a lot more than this. Uh, but you can see there's the budget and your actual what you've spent and then what is remaining right there. So it is right up in front of you. And what's so cool about this and what Mint really failed at doing, it's projecting out into the future. So I'm actually ashamed that I didn't hop over to Monarch in the first place. It's it's kind of a blessing that Mint has ousted 4 million people uh, because now I'm seeing the benefits of other softwares out there. Like this isn't perfect, but let's click on forecast up there. Check this out. So now we can actually project out into February, March, April. So these are the months coming up. And if I anticipate like I'm going to do some wedding photography during the summer. So in May, I, I might want to bump this up to, I don't know, seven uh, 1330 something like that and then that can actually you know once you hit that period for your budget that will will work just beautifully so if you're a farmer for example and you get a lot of your income during one season this is fantastic because you can actually project out look at into the future uh, a lot of people have that that basic income though you pretty much know what your paycheck is every month mine is up and down like this it's, it's all over the place and then let's click on yearly right up here. It's doing some AI algorithm behind the scene. There it is right there. And so now it's anticipating what we're gonna make for next year's. Uh, so the more you actually build into this and give it data from past years as you use it, it will be able to project out ahead out into 2028. Isn't that powerful? Let's take a look under the hood at budget settings right up here. So we can recalculate these based off of other values once I actually put them in. So you're not locked into this right here. And so that's my budget. Last thing before I let you go, if your bank is anything like mine, it's probably going to draw the last six months worth of transactions and put them into here. So in my personal opinion, I would say give it a try. It's not for everybody, especially all these features over on the side like goals, investments, advice, recurring. I don't really use a lot of that. Really, it's just the budgeting portion and the forecasting. That's what I love about this. And yes, I'd actually be willing to pay five to $10 a month or a hundred bucks a year uh, to actually make sure that something stays around unlike Mint. So Mint, if you're listening to this, screw you. <laughs> Hope this helps everybody.